Identity. The fact of being who or what a person or thing is. Michael Jackson once said, escapism, that's what I like. I'm not so crazy about the reality of everything. During his last tour, he talked about how he loved using his music to help people escape their problems. However, one thing that I observed as an energy healer is that escaping something gets old quickly and delays the inevitable reality. And this reality is that we are all overdue for healing the subconscious or the emotional energetic body. Many people would say to me, how lucky are you to have a mother and father oncologist family? You're probably raised the silver spoon. To which I would reply that it was a silver spoon, but my parents' hands were never holding it. I would skateboard for hours to escape the inevitable. I would be escaping the loneliness and quietness of the home. However, post-hypnotic suggestions, despair anchors, and emotional reverberations would start showing up. I didn't know what to call my intrusive thoughts. As Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park once said, you don't want to leave me in a room alone. The space between my ears is a very dangerous place. Wait, what did you say? What's a post-hypnotic suggestion? What's a despair anchor? an emotional reverberation. So according to Dr. Bradley Nelson and the Discover Healing Team, a post-hypnotic suggestion is a hypnotized statement after repetitive listening of bad music, bad television, bad parenting, and even entities implanting thoughts that are not yours. Despair anchors are real energies in the body where a negative statement is looking for the manifestation of the physical form. The thought enters the mind, I always get rejected and then your body becomes like a home-seeking missile looking for the physical validation of that negative statement. Emotional reverberation gets created in those moments when emotions flood your body. This rings a bell, so to speak. This bell doesn't just ring once, however. It has leftover resonance that keeps going on and on. You can easily feel those energies because the resonance is alive and well even after the event has passed. These are all terms I've studied and grown to love. It has given me a sense of what I am really working with on this physical plane. I didn't know my body had a tune-up system created by a master architect. I would put on music like Nirvana, Radiohead, Tool, Rage Against the Machine, etc. to have an outlet. I would come to find out that programming would continue negatively impacting me as I tried to replace silence with music. People who were dealing with their own post-hypnotic suggestions were now influencing me and putting me in a hypnotized state. My identity became buried in layers of negative programming that came from television, parents, and the music I resorted to. My personal belief? The programming came from earlier on, even before I was born. The first thing you should know about programming that I wish I knew earlier on is that we can acquire some more knowledge through muscle testing. So in the early 1900s, Boston orthopedic surgeon R.W. Lovett first developed the science of manual muscle testing. He used muscle testing to analyze disabilities resulting from polio and nerve damage. He applied muscle testing to trace spinal nerve damage because muscles that tested weak often had a common spinal nerve. This consists of pushing down on someone's arm gently near the wrist to find out what tests strong and what tests weak. Chiropractors use this body technology to find out what misalignments are present in their patients. Dr. Bradley Nelson uses it to find emotional energies trapped in the body using the emotion and body code system that can cause emotional, physical, and spiritual symptoms. Here is where it gets real interesting. Dr. Bradley Nelson's research goes beyond fundamental questions. He found out with clients that you can muscle test people about what they were doing before they came to Earth. He found out that these two questions always tested in the positive, no matter what religion or faith they currently associated themselves with. 
Were you with your creator working on your gifts and talents? Everyone tests positive, yes. Were you on a spiritual mission before you were born where you helped family members with their life events? Everyone tests positive, yes. These are called preconception trapped emotions. These emotions are typically emotional energies you absorbed from witnessing family members dealing with trauma. And you kept those energies in your spiritual body before attaining your physical body. The questions I ask myself, what did you witness? Relationship heartbreak, someone witnessing death, failures in business, family drama. Depending on what you witness and what you absorbed, it will affect your conscious decisions in your own life. As I mentioned before, this means that programming started before you were born. Now we're getting closer to your true identity. So we came here with gifts and talents. And we came here absorbing trauma from our family, which is our first form of negative programming. There are many other things that have distracted our search for our true selves. Many other things have programmed us. To always maintain a status, to receive unconditional love, is the beginning of a life filled with unfulfillment. Career status, academic school status, social school status, church status, sports status, neighborhood status, city and national status. These things should not and do not define us. We are more than we think. The goal for all of us should be to seek out our true selves and get to know who we were before this life. Then we can better understand who we are in the present and we can better shape our future. We all need to know that once we understand our programming and attain the proper healing, our true identity will arise. Let's dive deeper into that conversation that has haunted the minds of men and women for thousands of years. Three words, who am I? Hey SoulX Nation, this is Emmanuel Zavios, Certified Emotion Code Body Code Practitioner and Certified Group Energy Facilitator. I'm so grateful I get to hang out with you guys today. Um, as you know, my wife is Jess Zavios, a QLA, and, and we're just so grateful we get to work together uh, in this amazing uh, business of SoulX. And so today, obviously you saw the video about identity, but I want to go dive a little bit deeper on what this means for all of us and how our wellness practice that we've been doing for nine years, when we incorporated the AO scan, it really changed the way we help people. So let's talk about some certain topics here. So I wanna talk about my background a little bit, just kinda of how I fell into energy medicine. Uh, I wanna talk about the emotion code, body code, and also something that you guys might think is really unique is this thing called group healing, which I've been doing for the last year. Um, also the map of consciousness by Dr. David Hawkins, uh, the reality of emotions, and the type of emotions that we can have. I know the AOSCAN has ability to kind of notice the emotions we're using or we're, we're experiencing at the time, but to find out what type though, absorbed or is it inherited or is it preconception? I'm kind of gonna dive into that a little bit more. Also, we're gonna talk about the inner voice and how I use it every morning. Literally every morning I use the inner voice. Um, we have a couple of cool testimonials too about um, how energy medicine can help out with dyslexia, certain broadcast messages. Um, the cure for morning sickness, uh, and safety, how safety is super important for the subconscious, and also an amazing platform called Heal. Okay, so this is a really powerful quote that I, I once read, and, and you can kind of add your, whatever your beliefs are here. I'm not here to like, you know, change anybody's belief, but uh, this is what really resonated with me. It said, Jesus didn't have an identity problem. He knew where he came from, he knew who he was, and he knew where he was going. And when you're that liberated, then you can serve. So it seems to me when I read that, I was like, okay, so the only way we can actually be liberated is we have to know where we came from, why we're here, and where we're going. But maybe you do know a little bit about that because of your, your belief system and everything, but what if you don't know what type of car you're running, which like, you know, is, your, is your house or your temple or you? you know, how do we produce these emotions and what are we doing to our bodies when we experience emotions? So I wanna kinda of dive into that. Now, if you don't know your identity, the world can be a very, very interesting place to say the least. I wanna share with you guys that there's some scary things happening out there with like, you know, depression, anxiety, triggers, suicide, because people really don't know who they are. If they did, they wouldn't be experiencing those different symptoms. 
So this is an interesting thing I found um, because I feel like the pandemic has hit all of us. No matter where you live, depression and anxiety has kind of gone even higher uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's interesting, a lot of the younger, it affects a lot of the younger ones because they don't know really know how to handle this. Uh, a lot of us adults, we know the ramification of depression and anxiety. A lot of the younger ones, they just experience it. They don't know what to do with it, but they're willing to let us know that they're experiencing this. And so also what's really kind of scary is the 12th leading cause of death in the United States is suicide. So again, people are, if you don't know who you are, then why stay here on earth? If we know how beautiful our temple is, we would all stay here. And um, some scary statistics here. In 2020, 45,979 Americans died by suicide. In 2020, there were an estimated 1.2 million suicide attempts. On average, there's 130 suicides per day. So for me, when I was reading this, again, it has everything to do with like, it, do we know what we're doing here? One of the good examples I wanna use with you guys is um, if you go into work, let's say someone put you in this amazing corporate office. Hello, we're here at uh, Solex here, but let's say someone put you in this, this office, you're sitting at a cubicle and someone just said go, and then you just sit there and be like, go with what? What am I supposed to be doing here? So we would all agree, wouldn't it be nice to know what schooling you took to get to this corporate office? And what do you, what, what's your profession? What are you supposed to be doing during 8 a.m. to 8 p.m.? Also, if you do very well, do you rise up the ladder in corporate? I think you'd be way more proficient in life or in the situation if you knew what you were doing there. So we're gonna kinda get more in tune with like, what is our body doing every single day that we should be aware about that will tell you more about yourself? So the first thing is this, and, and I'll kinda go into my background. So around 2015, uh, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Not sure if any of you guys have been there, but it's not a fun place to stay, you know? And so uh, what I typically did was I always asked a mentor to, t to say like, hey, you know, go read, go read another book. There's a book that's missing uh, and I gotta go read it, right? So I went on Amazon and luckily this, this book, The Emotion Code by Dr. Bradley Nelson came up and um, it, just, it just, I was so drawn to it. And I said, I need to look into this. And what's interesting was that, and I'll, I'll tell you the reason why later on, I actually picked up the book about 12 different times and I was picking it up, dropping it. Later on, I found out I had this thing called the heart wall that kind of made me sort of numb to know what my mission is in life. So I was, I was looking into it and then finally, I just there was a time where someone was working on me and using this work with me. And what happened was I started opening myself up to this world of the emotion code. Now, both my parents are oncologists and hematologists. Uh, my mother unfortunately passed away in 2011. But what's interesting is that um, my father would totally probably not agree with any of this type of energy medicine. But again, I was looking for change in my life. So when you're desperate, you're just looking for anything, you know? And this really resonated with me. And so what is the emotion code? Um, some of you guys have used a Reiki medicine or theta healing or different types of healing like that. This is just another energy healing modality. And basically it's, it really tells you how our body is processing emotions throughout the day. And um, so let me tell you kind of how it works. So Dr. Brad was a chiropractor uh, for over 20 years, and he was asking for help from above to see how can I help out my chiropractic clients. Uh, and so what happened was is that he had some people with, with chronic illnesses and chronic diseases, and he didn't know how to help them. So he was just asking for help from above, and he got these answers about how this all works. And what he found out is that we have to go back to ancient teachings. And what they teach us in the past is that our organs are producing emotional energies. Um, so your liver, for example, produces anger, bitterness, guilt, hatred, resentment. And so if you drink too much alcohol, maybe you drink too much caffeine, your, your liver is very fatty, it's working extra hard, you're probably feeling those emotions very readily. And so throughout the day when you're feeling these emotions, um, picture like a uh, a ball or let's say a tennis ball or to like a cantaloupe. That's like the size of these little energies inside your body. And throughout the day, we're feeling those emotions. So if you notice, when was the last time you felt really, you felt really angry? Do you ever notice that there's like a sort of a time clock that sort of like turns off and all of a sudden you're like, hey, I'm not angry anymore. Or if you're crying a ton and then all of a sudden you're like, hey, I'm like, I don't feel like crying anymore. I always used to think about like what is causing that? And it's, what's, what's that little clock that says stop crying, right? Well, it actually makes more sense now if you picture these little spheres of energy processing through our skin, and as it's processing out, um, all of a sudden you uh, don't feel that emotion anymore. 
Now here's the problem though, is that some of these emotions are so fully are concentrated, they're very heavy, and they can actually get stuck in the body, and those are called trapped emotions. And they can irritate the tissues of the body, they can make you very susceptible to that emotion, they can cause disease, um, cancer even, and uh, make you very reactive. So you don't want these uh, in your body. Um, so what is the body code system? So the body code system, all these different types of modalities use muscle testing. So you know, pushing down on your arm, asking someone's question, asking a question to the body. Um, you can use the ring and ring method with your, with your fingers. Um, but it, this has been going around for you know, dozens and dozens of years. Chiropractors have used it to find out imbalances in the body. Uh, what's interesting about the body code though is, is that it's, it's very, it has a lot of hyperlinks in it, over 250 hyperlinks. So it's these amazing charts that go through all these different parts of your uh, systems that you have, right? And so circulatory system and, and respiratory system. So it goes, it's way more complex and full. The emotion code's just a, a component of the body code system. Now, this is, this is really interesting. So back in January 2022, um, I got introduced to group healing, which I didn't think was possible. So here's the thing. So let's go back a little bit. With the emotion code and body code, we find out, wow, I've been producing emotions throughout my whole life. Maybe that's why I have this disease. Maybe that's why I have this symptom. I should know, I should have known in fourth grade that I produced these emotions throughout the day, but no one taught us, right? So again, our identity was kind of being held from us, but now you know it. Now you know it since you have this information now, now you have that information. So um, now with group healing, see, did you know that your body or your temple can be involved in group healing? Or if someone who's the host of the, of the group can provide a specific theme, let's say like PTSD, anxiety, depression, and you can actually, your body can take about eight hours of healing. Um, also, you don't have to be present with that person. They could be all done long distance or, or what they call proxy. And what's interesting is that um, for seven days straight, you're, you're healing for eight hours uh, throughout that day, and you're noticing amazing positive symptoms. So this is something I just found out in January, and literally probably about 130 testimonials came from just helping many different people in all areas of life, relationships, um, trauma as a child, um, you know, depression, um, acquiring wealth. Just There's many blocks that many people have, and your body can do that. It can actually participate in these group healings. So you're like, well, well why should we participate in this? And also, if you, if you have this amazing technology uh, like the AO scan, just know that whenever you're doing an inner voice in the morning, just know that you're raising your frequency of your, of your body. But then here's the major question I always just ask is who cares, right? Like why do all this stuff? Why remove emotional baggage? You know, why get better? Why feel less of what you feel, you know, you know in your inner voice scan, it says something versus something. Why feel less of that? And here's something that I want to introduce to you is uh, the map of consciousness by Dr. David Hawkins. And what's interesting about this map is all of us fall into that map, whether we like it or not, okay? So, um, and he was, Dr. David Hawkins, he muscle tested thousands and thousands of patients. Like this is like research since like way back in the, the 60s, 70s. He's researched and, and muscle tested, blindfold muscle tested people on like where everyone is on this testing. And um, if you look at the graph here, um, where you want, where the, most of the world is, I think like before Buddha, they would say, uh, was around the 100 mark, you know? And then when, when they say when Jesus came, it's, that went to the 200 mark. So the whole world is kind of around the level of 200. So it's between courage and pride. And, and so if, you, if people go out to war, for example, you're on the level of courage, you know? Um, but you want to go on higher levels. There's peace, there's bliss, there's love, there's, there's reason. There's all these different higher levels of consciousness. And to me, this got me more excited because this tells us that our body was meant to go to the higher levels of enlightenment, which is if there's people that you look up to that are your ascended masters or people that are really high frequency, I'm telling you, they're on the higher levels of the map of consciousness and they got there through energy healing, through yoga, connecting with their inner child. They did different things to get higher on this map. So isn't that exciting for you here, you who are interested in energy medicine, interested in the AO scan, you're doing things to yourself to increase your frequency so your body gets used to a higher level of consciousness. Um, so, and like I said, like a Komodo dragon, this is a funny example, a Komodo dragon, for example, has a very low frequency. Even animals have certain frequencies, but a Komodo dragon will eat something else and just leave it for dead in the night. You know, it's very, very dog-eat-dog, -dog, you know? And uh, some people are very Komodo dragon-ish, you know? And so they're 
on that lower level of the spectrum. Uh, if you really want to go in the lower, lower parts, maybe you have some friends and family who feel a lot of guilt and shame. And so they, they mirror guilt and shame to people. They're on the lower levels. Uh, if your mother cooked you some, some amazing cookies, she actually brought 500 level to the room to make you feel more peace and joy in that room. So again, this is a real, if you haven't read the book, Understanding uh, the Map of Consciousness by Dr. David Hawkins, it'll literally open up your mind to be like, wow, every animal, every object, every um, cathedral, even if you walk into a cathedral of Michelangelo, uh, you'll actually feel the resonance of 500 and above just by experiencing the genius in artistry. You know, so it's really interesting to be like, who you associate with, how you work on yourself, all matters. And the goal is to be on the higher levels of consciousness. Okay, so with the reality of trapped energy. So this is really fascinating. So when I first heard about these little spheres of energy, I'm like the most skeptical person you'll ever meet. Um, what I started noticing is I said, well, where are they? Like, where are they exactly located? And I remember I went to a seminar and uh, Dr. Brad brought somebody up on stage and started muscle testing them and said, okay, let's do a baseline test, which means let's see if you're testable. And they would say, what's your name, Emmanuel? Okay, so my arm would be strong. And they say, okay, say your name is Bob. And then the arm would be weak. So it's interesting that the, the body can't lie. Your body gets weak uh, when you start telling lies. But what's also interesting, you can ask where are these trapped emotions located? So for example, if let's say they found sadness or anger in the body, he cannot, he, what he used to do is he would kind of cut the body sort of in half and say, is it on your upper left side of your, your body or the upper right side? And he would muscle test. He says, on the lower right, no. Upper right, oh, there we go. The arm is strong. And so then that kind of tells you, so now it's got to be up here somewhere, right? The upper right. But then it goes even further. He says, well, how does a trapped emotion feel? Just to kind of even make it more real. What he would do is he would actually hold, he would say, hey, client, you know, hold your arm very strong. And I'm just going to put my hand closer and closer to your right side of your body. So he would slowly move to the right side of the body. And as soon as he touched the trapped emotion that's kind of bubbling there uh, on the surface, the arm would go down. And then when he'd go kind of further away, all of a sudden his, the arm would go stronger. So, and he actually said it felt like a, a light little wind uh, on the hands, kind of like someone's blowing on your hand. That's how a trapped emotion feels. So whenever you say, are there any trapped emotions causing neck pain? All of a sudden the body goes boop, 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 and starts like popping up these little trapped emotions. And then you can ask, where are these located at? So it's really, that made it more real than I've ever seen. In fact, there was this one time where a lady was dealing with a lot of headaches and um, she had some sort of chemicals in her hair, uh, but we didn't know it was in her hair. It's just that there's a chemical energy in the body code system that we need to remove. And what's really interesting is he started putting his hand and he was like locating it and it was like around the hair. And he says, do you use aerosol products or do you, this is actually affecting your body. And her arm went down when, as soon as his hand touched the, the head area. So I thought that was really fascinating. Okay, so let's talk about the AO scan and the emotion code. So my wife, I always call her the left arm of our practice and I'm like the right arm. We could switch, we could switch it up if we want. Uh, but basically what it is, is it's so amazing that you have the, the way to scan, you can scan up to 65 emotions uh, with the AO scan, with the body system scan. And the question is, are there more trapped emotions that can tell us about who we are? And this is where we get again more to the identity of who we really are. Um, the first thing is this. So as you, you saw in the video, there's something called the preconception uh, trapped emotion. So you're wondering preconception. So is that in the womb or wh where is that? This was one of the more rare ones that Dr. Brad found. Um, when he was asking how early was this trapped emotion created. And it, he said it was a before five years old. He was testing somebody before two years old, huh? Before second, before first trimester. Well, that's weird. So he was, this whole thing, this, this isn't like, a, like up for debate. This is using muscle testing. It's literally like the greatest lie detector test on the planet and it's in your body. And, and the divine gave that to us. So the thing is, is that he said, okay, this is before you were born. And, and the body said, yes. Yeah. So this is called the preconception trapped emotion. And um, as you saw in the video, what Dr. Brad and I both have the same belief is that, um, that we got this in the spirit body before we were born. Now, some of these we created in the spirit body. Some of these were, um, we, we believe that you had like a sort of a spirit mission before you came here. And every time you, um, you tested someone, say, hey, did you absorb this from somebody you were trying to help on your mission? The body says yes, like you'll, you'll, it'll test positive. So you would remove it like anything else. You would use a magnet and you kind of rub it on the back of someone and just release it and it's just three times, right? If it's inherited, it's 10 times. 
And what's really interesting is there'd be huge shifts. A lot of the phobias that people have um, come from preconception trapped emotions. If you want a huge shift in your life, you remove these guys. That uh, would really help out. Um, I once saw, I think Dr. Brad remove uh, a migraine that someone had for literally 20 years. And one of the things that she had was a preconception trapped emotion. And within five minutes, her, her headache went away. Um, also inherited emotions. What does this mean? It means your great, great, great grandfather, let's say he lost his farm. And then he felt terror. It was, you know, because he felt these people were invading his farm. Um, that terror would get passed down all the way down to you and then even to your children. And you can muscle test to see, did it go to this child or this child? And then basically when you release it, here's what's beautiful, is that it releases it from that child and releases it from you and everyone who's involved all the way to that person who lost their farm. So it's very beautiful. It's got this huge family generational healing. Sometimes I work with clients and um, their son is changing and I've never worked on him once. So I just work with the father and then all of a sudden the, the, the son's changing or the, the daughter's changing. And that's because I've probably released a few inherited emotions that affected that child. Also, you have prenatal emotions. So prenatal means you were in the womb. So in, in Chinese culture, there's some cultures in, in, in China that uh, when the woman is, uh, you know, has a baby, they actually have a sabbatical from their husband. They take some time off. They eat healthier food. They do meditations because they know their child's getting programmed. Uh, early up front. So they just say, hey, I'm going to, I don't want to program my child for negative, you know. And unfortunately, I do tell moms that if your child is rambunctious, age age four, age five, and you're like, what's going on with my son? How does he have depression? Sometimes it, the key is what was the mom going through during that first, second, third trimester? How much stress were they dealing with? And could they handle it? That child must have been taking some hits. And so there's some prenatal trapped emotions that could happen as well. Absorbed is really funny too. Um, you've heard that saying where it says, um, you become the average of the four people you hang out with. Well, what happens is, is that you can actually absorb an energy. If you go to coffee with one of your friends and she, you know, she starts spilling about how bad her relationship is, you might absorb dread or you might absorb disgust from her. And now it's easy for you to feel that emotion. And it may cause you physical issues later on. Um, also, there's shared emotions. When a bunch of people, this is very common with like uh, two people getting into a bad discussion, if one's being defensive, the other one's being defensive, you guys can share defensiveness together. Um, if, someone, and if everyone in a funeral is feeling grief, what's interesting, I can work on someone and release grief from that person, and then it, it helps everybody else that was grieving as well. Um, and the last thing is there's this thing called emotional compound. That was found out um, back in 9-11. Uh, there was a client that came in uh, to visit um, Brad, and what happened was is he, he said, uh, this is weird, this is not just one trapped emotion, it's like two. Uh, or three, and um, this person was involved in 9-11, and so they felt two or three emotions at the same time. You and I can probably agree that there are some heavy times in our life where we feel two emotions or three emotions at the same time, and they get stuck in a ball of energy. That's called an emotional compound. So for those of you who do those inner voice reports, what's interesting is that maybe you might, they might say, hey, I don't feel that emotion, or why is this coming up, you know? And this actually can make more sense for your scan now, as you can say, oh, you know what? It could be inherited, or it could be absorbed, you know? And so then they go, oh yeah, you know what? My husband's just like that. That makes sense why I absorb that emotion, you know? So it actually makes more sense uh, it adds more sense to the AO scan just, just because people, again, you know, people are very sensitive when you tell them about emotions and stuff. I'll, I'll even tell you a funny joke. I remember I, I worked with a lady once and, and I said, um, you know, I'm finding a peeved in your body, you know, which means easily annoyed. And she's like, peeved? I never get peeved. I don't know what you're talking about. I never get annoyed. I was like, you're actually getting peeved right now as we speak, you know? So again, people are sensitive about emotions. When you do the inner voice scan, I know it could be kind of, kind of uh, you know, nerve wracking sometimes, but... You shouldn't be, really. The more we're in connection with our emotions, the better we are towards other people. So, um, so don't be afraid to say, hey, you know what? This might be absorbed energetically or this might be you know, shared with someone. And then they might say, oh, you know what? Someone's coming to my mind, you know, this person. Okay, so here's one of my favorite words is finding the associated imbalance. And so um, what I noticed is when I was doing these scans and, and my wife is like, the queen of scanning. Uh, what's interesting is that, you know, she would find certain things, certain emotions people feel, especially with the inner voice. You know, it's like you, you get to kind of tell what they feel a lot, what they commonly feel. And, um, but here's the interesting part is what's causing that? You know, what's the culprit of it? 
you know, and in the body code system, what I've noticed is that, for example, if there's a, if there's a despair anchor that says like, um, a despair anchor basically means it's a, it's a sentence, it's a negative one, and you're always looking for it to be true, right? So let's say like, like everyone always lies to me. Okay, that's a despair anchor. It's not just a negative statement. It's, not an, it's actually an actual energy in your body that you're actually heat-seeking, looking around going like, everyone lies to me, everyone lies to me, everyone lies to me. So is it possible that you create more betrayal emotions because of that or uh, defensiveness or self-abuse or different emotions? Then yeah, see, so it's kind of cool to kind of not just look at the surface of the AO scan, what emotions we're finding, but through the body code, you can find out is there something that, that's like an engine that's making them feel those emotions time and time again? And the answer is yes, you know? And so um, that, I love that. For me also, we found out that I introduce my clients who are emotion code, body code clients to the inner voice immediately. In fact, I think the first day that I meet them, I say, hey, have you had an inner voice scan? They're like, no, I haven't. It's like, you need something to regulate your emotions because I'm not gonna be in your pocket all the time to like come out and just be like, hey, let's do a session. Like, so in order for you to kind of like regulate yourself, I'd probably get an inner voice scan with my wife. And then every morning and every night, I want you to listen to this meditation uh, that will give you binaural beats and, and have healing frequencies. And it'll kind of like help you process properly. And what I mean by that is that whenever you do a body code session, I, I can muscle test to see how long are you processing. The body's taking time to heal. The best thing they could have is the inner voice uh, meditation. They can listen to that. Uh, it really helps them out. Um, also, with those of you who do scans and see a lot of those, you're checking out those dots, right? My, my wife lives in the, the red and green dot realm. You know, um, one of the things is we noticed that her fallopian tube one time, it was, it was red and it stayed red after optimization. And I was able to use the body code and just release, just ask the chart and say, you know, what energy is causing her fallopian tube not to be balanced? And I went in there, did some couple things, and then she checked it again and then it was green. So it actually gave me another testimonial of the body code, how real it is, um, uh, just by doing a rescan of what was going on. Also her ovaries, I remember the left one had, a, um, had an imbalance, it stayed red as well. I did another session, this was just like two weeks ago. And then all of a sudden it turned green. So again, it's really beautiful that like, I tell some, some of my clients who have some very, very serious illnesses, hey, you should do a full body scan. And then, and then my wife will let me know where all your reds are so I can go work with you. And it really, really works hand in hand. As we were mentioning the inner voice, again, I always find out, like I wanna know what's, what's causing them to feel something, you know? And um, one of the other things I wanna share with you guys is this thing called a post-hypnotic suggestion. So um, this is a really interesting one. So if you hear a lot of you know, music a lot, when I was younger, I used to listen to you know, some pretty not so great music and they would say things over and over and over again. And what you don't know is that you're actually being hypnotized by whatever the vocalist is singing about. Uh, so for example, there's a classic Nirvana song called, you know, called Dumb, and the chorus is basically, you know, I think I'm dumb. You know, and he says it like literally six or seven times. Now, if you really like that music, you're gonna honestly think you're dumb, but that's your subconscious believing that. So the thing is, is that what I love about the inner voice is that it finds a way to stabilize you, you know, morning and night or even more if you wanted to. But also you might want to get rid of that little suggestion in there if that comes from music, it comes from video games. So be careful with your children playing video games and they hear consistent patterns uh, of voicing. Um, and, um, and also too, like with the, the movies as well, everything that's kind of like said over and over again. And even if you have a negative person uh, that continues to say something very negative to you, that person doesn't know, but they are also programming post-hypnotic suggestions in your body. And so uh, it's wonderful, again, just to kind of, they kind of work hand in hand in regards to what energy is, is causing this and then what emotions you see on the scan. Okay, so with, I wanna share a couple of really powerful testimonials of like the body code and, and how it can um, really kind of, again, open up your identity. Because again, what happens when someone has dyslexia? They go, I'll never read. You know, it becomes a part of their identity, right? But is it really them? No. They're the beautiful light that's, that's in the inside. And what's interesting is that I was working with this 19 year old, I believe, and this was like about four years ago. And just to show you kind of like how amazing the body really is. Um, again, if you, if, you know, I once heard that like, we, if we saw a homeless person and we were like kind of opened up our spiritual eyes and we would literally see it like a person glowing, we would want to put it on an altar and like worship it. Like we have no idea how powerful our bodies really are. But what's interesting is that with, with dyslexia, she thought she would never read ever again. And what's interesting is I started working with her and I started finding some trauma and it was between this, these things called disconnections. 
So in the body code, there's a really powerful, uh, interesting thing with like uh, spiritual disconnection and then there's like physical disconnection. So there's spiritual, physical disconnection. And um, the difference is spiritual to physical means that the spirit of something's kind of sticking out. So for example, your stomach, you have a spiritual stomach and you have a physical stomach. And um, when you have a lot of imbalances or toxins or pathogens, the spiritual stomach may stick out from the physical. All of a sudden, the physical stomach is not doing well, okay? That's called a spiritual-physical disconnection. Now, the physical-to-physical physical disconnection means two things are not talking. So parts of your brain, for example, you have like the temporal lobe and the um, parietal lobe. Maybe they're not communicating at 100%. What's amazing about muscle testing is you can check to see, hey, what's the percentage of the spiritual version of the organ and the physical being disconnected? Oh, look, it's 42%. So then I have to dive into the body code, find out what's causing it to not be at 100%. Now, this lady, she had both of them. She had a spiritual physical disconnection with, with one of her lobes. So I had to kind of slowly move the spiritual lobe back into the physical. Then there were two or three lobes that were not talking. And I was muscle testing her and age nine kept coming up and age 14 kept coming up. And she says those are the two most traumatic times of her life, which was, you know, her, her father was unfortunately being very abusive to her. And she like knew exactly, as soon as I said nine, she says, wow, I can't believe you brought up that age. That's exactly when I was going through those very hard times. And literally within the next day, she was able to read for the first time ever at age 19. And what's interesting is I said, um, she didn't believe it, so she said, I'm gonna try to read with smaller words, and, um, and then maybe I can't read it. You know, I'm like, yeah, go ahead. You know, she's like, oh, I can read it. You know, she's like, yeah, you should, uh, you should start reading now. And she said, uh, no, but uh, what if I'm tired? Maybe if I'm tired, then, then maybe it won't work. You know, and I said, yeah, read when you're tired, read small letters, you know, and she still kept on reading. So she's uh, really happy that at age 19, she says, you know, this isn't me. I'm not dyslexic. This isn't my true identity. Um, a broadcast message. Uh, I have this one. So what is a broadcast message? If you if you um, ever seen those shirts that says kick me or if you saw, unfortunately, some bullies put it on someone like a little piece of paper and a tape says kick me and people would start kicking that person. What's what's going on? Here's a sad part is that, you know, we have broadcast messages and that's our version of our kick me sticker behind me. So you, it's almost like you're wearing a shirt that says ignore me or people don't listen to me or um, abuse me or different things like that. And you wonder why year after year after year, you get the same theme in some area of your life. So I knew one lady uh, that comes to mind that she, um, every, everyone would ignore her. And I think one, it was ignore me. And it was because her family used to ignore her when she was younger. So she, it's almost like she, the body's like, okay, I guess this is where I feel safe. So I'm gonna put on this shirt that says ignore me. The problem was is that bled into her relationships and, and also bled to uh, her corporate American job, you know? And so she went there and no one would ever notice her. So I found it and I said, hey, let's, let's add something new to it. So that's called, you know, installing a new broadcast message. And the one that we put in was, um, I am the life of the party. And we put it in there and then uh, it was literally like day, like within two days, everyone, they had a huge corporate meeting and the boss just pointed her out and said, hey, you know what? We don't give enough credit to blank, blank, blank. And then she was like, whoa, everyone's paying attention to me now. And everyone was being so nice to her, like at work and everything. She's like, what is going on here? She's like, this never happens. Again, you never know what message you're putting out there. Um, also, what's really interesting with morning sickness, uh, a lot of people have these different um, sort of wellness band-aids, if you will. If you Google how to heal morning sickness, there's only band-aids out there. Uh, but what's interesting is that the founder, um, I think it was his third or fourth child, the mother was having a lot of morning sickness and he was just praying, asking for help and said, what, what can I do to help out my wife? I hate seeing her like this. He later found out what it is, is some sort of spiritual, physical disconnection between the mom and the baby. Uh, it could be the, the, uh, the mom's brain to the placenta or the, the mom's brain to the, the uterus. There's just all these different, like sort of spiritual, physical disconnections between different parts of the baby, spiritual baby, physical baby, spiritual mom, physical mom, but it all has to do with disconnections. So, I mean, how would a regular doctor come up with that? Oh yeah, you have spiritual, physical disconnections with your baby. Like what, what is that? And uh, it's just really inspired this type of work. Also, um, heart walls. Um, you ever have that feeling where your heart feels heavy or it feels like it wants to break? Um, it, a lot of us have had that, especially if you broke up with someone or things like that, or someone, you know, you're grieving from someone who passed away. So that's what a heart wall is, is like every time your heart feels heavy, you're like one step closer to this thing called um, broken heart syndrome, BHS. So if you ask a cardiologist, 
how do you get BHS? They say it's like stress through work, um, a breakup, grieving, you know, and you have to be very careful because if you're, the tendons inside your heart basically stretch too much, the heart will collapse and then you die of BHS. So everyone's feeling this throughout the day, but what's protecting you from it? And the theory is, is that your body is taking trapped emotions and placing it over the heart to protect it from breaking. And you're stacking it literally probably from in the womb. That's very common that maybe your mom felt something heavy and then you made a heart wall out of it. And you're stacking all these walls. So if you're someone who you wish you had more energy, um, you had lack of clarity of your mission in life. Uh, when people give you love and affection, you're like, eh, I see it, but I don't feel it like I, I wish I could. Uh, or what if you, you talk to people and they always hear something different than what you say? Or what if um, you lack an abundance, you know? Or depression, anxiety, triggers. Those are all things that heart walls can create. And for me, I've cleared over probably 4,000 heart walls in nine years and I've seen huge shifts, especially I remember I used to do a pro bono work for, for veterans and uh, I would you know, obviously charge them nothing for the service they did for our country. And uh, they got back to their work, their relationships started working again, they slept better at night, no more night terrors anymore. I mean, it's a really beautiful phenomenon. All right, so I just wanna say thank you guys for tuning in and listening in. And like I said, when I remember when I was, um, when, when Jess and I were, were married, she felt that there was something coming to her that was gonna be very, very powerful. And she didn't know what it was. Uh, some of you guys may know this story, but uh, she became a practitioner just like myself. And I was so impressed. I'm like, hey, we're now motion code, body code together, you know, or like, you know, power couple, let's go. But then um, what's interesting is that she says, no, there's, there's something coming my way that it has something to do with energy. And it's just like, and I'm gonna be really passionate about it. And so I said, okay, well, um, let's just find out what it is. And then Solex basically knocked on her door and she knew without a doubt that that was her calling. In fact, because she didn't have a heart wall because I removed a heart wall from her. So she was like, her, her heart would really tell her what her mission was. Um, she knew that this is what she needed to do. And so we've been working together and some of you guys may have heard the rumors that we created a, an amazing platform called HEAL, which stands for Have Empathy and Love. And we just wanted to find a place where we can like give basically freedom to us who sometimes in our social media platforms, we're not given freedom to talk about uh, wellness you know, tactics or wellness tips or things like that. And so we wanted to find kind of a hub where we can kind of you know, be together, talk about things, and not have to be worried about being banned. And uh, it's one of the things where we're most passionate about right now. So definitely, if you're not on um, this Heal platform, I think you'd really appreciate it. You can find us both there, say hello to us there. And uh, we're so grateful for this amazing opportunity here in Solex. Uh, I really believe this is the technology of the future. We're all in very, very good hands and the timing couldn't be better. So thank you.